Hey, welcome to Metal Sharpens Metal. My name is Daniel. Today we are going to go over three songs for the price of one. It's a trilogy of songs in this EP called The Heat EP by a band called American Arson. They are a really cool Christian rock duo, uh, just drummer, guitarist, guitarist sings. I think they both sing actually. It's cool. They came all packaged together, which is why I'm doing it uh, this way. And then they put all three of them into their full length release that came out shortly after. So hope you guys enjoy it. Let's jump in. All right, we get double lyrics again today too. This first song is called Run, as you'll shortly see. You may not know what that is if you didn't grow up in the church. That is a well-used offering plate. That synthwave vibe. There's a great chorus. And they somehow even get better as the songs go on. You better dust what you learned in a Time to two step. Plate fangs. There you go. I love those subtle harmonies in the background. They blend well with the guitars. Very cool. Those synths going. Very Foo Fighters right now.
Mm. I told you the choruses keep getting better. It's so good. Great use of the woos. Love the woos. I love the guitars, kick drum, and vocals all synced up. That's so good. Hmm, very cool. So I wanted to jump in and take a quick break before we get to this last song. A couple references I wanted to make sure we caught in there. They felt flashes of festivals where her heroes used to play. They sang about a savior till the big check cleared then walked away. So we're talking Christian festivals and some people, you know, they're not naming names, were uh, walking away after, after getting their money. In the second, third verse here, I guess, they're thinking about like a local house show where it was very small. They're in a basement, no main stage, but the simplicity of that show made mountains shake. I mean, Jesus talked about praying so that a mountain would be lifted up and cast into the sea. You know, maybe the mountains were shaking in that sense. And also in the Psalms, it talks often about the trees shouting for joy, the mountains clapping, you know, all these types of uh, imagery that talk about true worship and how creation itself will even worship God. And then back in, uh, the first song, real quick, we see that the protagonist didn't let cash and status control them, which was a problem to the people who put all that emphasis on it. The people who pray for prosperity, right? There's a thing in Christianity called the prosperity gospel, which is a gospel that says Jesus died not only for your sins, but also so that you would be healthy, wealthy, and wise. And basically, if you don't have one of those three things, then that's your fault. You, you didn't have enough faith and you need to pray more. And you kind of work the formula the right way, then you will you will get money. Ooh, I can't believe our house is going to be full of rich people named Dottie and Todd and Rick. And as long as you give these leaders enough money of their own. Lots of problems. I'm sure many people do not like that at first blush. There's a lot of grating feelings of, against a person who's just trying to take money for you while attaching the name of Jesus to it. Um, that is what we call fleecing the flock, not a good thing to do. They even said one more time, your worth isn't measured by what you've earned. So they're recommending that this boy, the protagonist, uh, run away from all this, burn it. So let's jump into this last song where we see the conclusion of the story. Very cool riff. I don't know what's making that like, whistling effect. But I saw someone say it sounded like the Mandalorian. It really does. <laughs> Love that click on the top of the kick drum. Mm, and I love pushing that one. Oh man.
the perfect amount of gravel in his voice too. Yep, they saved the best course for last. Love to see it. Great rock first. I didn't say it yet, but I love this snare sound too. And it's really well balanced with his kick. It's that's a great drum mix. I mean, right? Like that that chorus, like I'm not liable if it gets stuck in your head for the rest of the day. I only recently discovered this band and I was instantly drawn in by what I'm I, I think I'm just gonna deem manly core, giga chad core, something like that. I mean the first music I saw was for a song of theirs called Hammer and Gavel. And I noticed that the lead singer even looks like the Giga Chat guy. I mean, look at this. Look at this. It's the same guy. I Have you ever seen them in the same room at the same time? Yeah, didn't think so. During that song, he was all yelling about God's kingdom coming in glory and, and all that type of stuff. I mean, come on. Pure masculine fire it's great so as you may have gathered if you were listening along to the words and and thinking about it this ep is a slam against certain forms of christian music hey everyone i just wanted to jump in real quick and make a couple clarifications you idiot as i was editing this i realized that i was talking a lot about the bands that had lost their faith that they were referencing in the second song and i was kind of talking about that more than the uh, boy that they were saying to flee these bands and flee these other things. And I think I was talking about the band so much just because a lot of these videos are talking to the bands that wrote the songs. I've seen a lot of bands, you know, that claim to be Christian lose their faith. And so it's something that's on my mind. Anyway, the framework that kind of came to mind while I was uh, editing was, was this. I think it's a little bit more helpful. So in the first song, they tell the boy to flee these false churches that are money hungry and just, you know, looking for his credentials. In the second song, they say, flee from these bands that claim Christ, but aren't really, you know, they're kind of faking it and, and they don't have any substance to back that up. And then in the third song, they're saying, come with me and I will point you to the savior on the straight and narrow road, a better way than, than those other two options. I do get into some of those topics a little further on in the video, um, but I just wanted to sum that up a little bit more succinctly and clearly. Um, so yeah, enough hand holding around my mess of a brain. Let's get back into the video. During the whole EP, they're telling the protagonist to run away and to flee from these things. They're saying it's important enough and it's not going to always be comfortable. You're going to have to be on the straight and narrow, uh, just like Jesus said. You know, and a lot of this, uh, the lyrics in this EP remind me of the Pilgrim's Progress. When Christian left his town in the Pilgrim's Progress, everybody was berating him. They were saying, you're foolish. What are you doing? He said, I have a duty to my Lord. I have to go do this. I need forgiveness for my sins and I need to do what he commanded me. So I get a lot of that sense in the first one, which says, boy, run away. And then in the 
last song here, you're saying goodbye, red lights, I'm over the edge. And he calls him a young rebel. I mean, that's how Christian was perceived by his whole town when he was when he was running away from the city of destruction where he came from. So narrow is the road we choose to run. Comfort is a trap we must refuse. This is exactly what Christian was going through. He was battling against wanting to rest and be comfortable and sleep in these, in these nice places along the way. But he knew he had to get up and keep going. And he had a duty. And he had to go through some more hard places to get there. He had to pass lions. He had to pass Apollyon the dragon. But it's worth it when this is the call on your life. So a really cool, really cool link there. Now, don't mistake me or them, I would say, as meaning if you have ever been a hypocrite in your life, then you're not a real Christian or you're unforgivable or anything like that. It's like that's kind of square one for us. We we have to admit our sin and admit that we don't live up to the standard that we profess to follow, who is Jesus. So what I'm pretty sure this band would be calling out is the, is the bands that acted two different ways and they were not admitting it and not repenting from it. They just kept moving forward while everyone assumed that their faith was intact. Now, I can already hear some of you saying, well, what if some of these bands tried to discuss these issues, but they were afraid of the pushback that was going to come? I do get that to an extent, but if you come out and ask for help before you devolve into a jaded atheist, real Christians will be happy to jump on that, try to walk alongside you, try to help you with going through whatever the struggles are in your mind, and yeah, get you through that time in your life. What's way worse than that is appearing to be faithful for years with the facade still on your face. You're collecting your paychecks from the Christians who assume that you're essentially on the same page, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, apparently, you are deconstructing, deconverting. Doesn't make any sense. God is dead. So these people need accountability and mentorship from from fellow Christians who've walked this before them, not just not just the five people or you know however many in their band that are with them on tour. Like you all can't help pull each other out of the bog when you're all in the bog at the same time. Now on the other side of the coin, there there are totally people who would pressure these Christian bands to stay in their lane and to just not rock the boat on this issue. People who are supporting you financially, who have maybe your record label people that have turned this into a little bit of a business. They'll say things like, oh, your song's on Christian radio. Oh, you've played at these churches, these festivals. How could you say that you don't believe it? That's that's not a thing. Usually these business decisions are made without orthodoxy or the faith and health of the of the band you know, in mind at all. And there's sometimes bands that might even say, oh, well, I believe in Jesus. But you you come to realize it's it's their version of Jesus that they've built up for themselves. And when that happens, those people in the, in the business seats of power, they're not going to push that issue any further. They're not going to See if you are believing in an orthodox, you know, Jesus or the real Jesus, as Paul talks about in the New Testament. They're just going to kind of say, well, you said the magic words. You said Jesus. You said God. We're good. You're a Christian. We're fine. Don't don't say any more. Don't say any more. I don't want to hear it. And they step back. So anybody actively pressuring a band like that to kind of keep going in something they don't believe is totally part of the problem as well. And I'm not even trying to totally throw the record label under the bus. It's not their job to be the pastor for these bands. It's the job of the individuals in the band to be in a solid local biblical church, physical church too, learning from a pastor who can preach from the word. And I'm sure that this is already ticking some people way off. I, I hear the uh, excuses or, you know, nuance trying to bubble up inside your head. You want to say things like, well, these big churches are just hungry for money. It's like they said in the very first song. What are all these churches for? I agree. There are power and money hungry churches who are fleecing these people and they're eager to just take money without worrying about the spiritual well-being. And unfortunately, that, that happens in these bigger churches in America where it's so easy to just blend in. You don't have to become part of the culture. You don't have to ever meet the pastor or even a single elder, and you can just come in, leave. So the leadership of these churches has a responsibility as well. They are to keep watch over your souls. They are to help you and encourage you and make sure that they're going through these questions with you, these these problems, these burdens you have. Hebrews thirteen seventeen says this exact thing in a, in a better way. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. So Hebrews wants us to submit to elders. Well, wait, what if they're bad elders? Hang on, that's not what it says. They are called to a very high standard when you read what Paul wrote in Timothy and Titus and all these other places. But just because they're not perfect elders doesn't mean that you get to say, I'm casting you off. I'm not going to follow your way anymore. You need to be under the watchful eye of these people who should care about your soul. So I really like this EP. I like the encouragement to the protagonist to run, to flee from these from these uh, wicked churches. But my spidey sense tingles with songs like this sometimes because it seems like they're encouraging you to leave the established church and to say that that's all bad. I don't think that this band is necessarily going down that path of deconstruction or or saying that you know we should push away from the established church or anything like that. But I just want to warn against that and, and put that out there because that is usually step one to how people shipwreck their faith. They say, 
hey, run away from this, just follow Jesus, you know, ignore all the other stuff. That's all extra garbage and baggage that we don't need to have. But then they start following a Jesus that starts to believe a lot of the same things they believe. And that's kind of a bad place to be in because that means that you've made an idol. And we also can't flee the church just because it has people who are broken and, and hypocritical in it. We need to recognize that all the Christians around us are broken people who have been renewed by a savior. And we need to commit to living that life alongside them as Jesus commands. So thanks for joining me today on the first full EP analysis of the channel. I had fun listening to this, and I'm pretty sure my knuckles are feeling more hairy than normal, which I think is actually normal for when you listen to this. It's a good thing, and I like it. It keeps my hands warmer in the winter. So there's there's many benefits to listening to this type of music. I hope you got some benefits out of it too, and we hope to see you next time. Bye.